one of the major things we focus on is how to make a space comfortable without uh, uh, introducing uh, too many heavy, high in energy intensive uh, measures. What is very important with sustainability is what is appropriate. You can see how the built and unbuilt interacts with itself, uh, with uh, each other and how they merge with each other. The structure is built by the uh, local tribal community. We have also ensured that along, uh, along with sustainability, uh, the, the basic uh, luxuries are not compromised. A warm good afternoon, sir. A warm good afternoon, ma'am, from the Architects Diary. And I'm Simran Khare, co-editor at the Architects Diary. Today, we have with us Shriya and Prashant, the founders of Blurring Boundaries. Blurring Boundaries is a contextualist design practice in Mumbai, engaged in creating sustainable and appropriate biophilic design solutions. The founders, Shriya and Prashant, believe that architecture has the power to affect the core of society and must be used responsibly. The spatial environment affects the thought process of an individual and therefore that of society at large. The firm is doing some exceptional work with its sustainable approaches and changing the landscape of architecture. Without further ado, let us begin with an insightful presentation by Blurring Boundaries, followed by an interview, interesting interview where we delve into the untold stories of their journey. I hand over the stage to both of you. Thank you, Simran. Thank you for the opportunity to present on that world. That border. Uh, looking forward to the interview and yes. um, so we'll we'll present a little bit of our work, uh, yeah. and a little bit of our philosophies today. So, uh, we'll start with a little bit of uh, our firm philosophy and our beliefs. Uh, uh, basically, we are a, a artisanal, innovative, experimental uh, practice, and we believe in collaborations. Uh, we believe that each project presents with uh, unique opportunities and uh, uh, challenges and uh, responding to those challenges uh, always uh, end up in exploring different solutions. So we believe uh, uh, in site context also very strongly. Uh, so each uh, you know project always has a very different uh, approach in terms of uh, how the design develops because each context site context and situation is very very different so that is uh, primarily where we you know kind of start the projects uh, work uh, from we also believe in using the locally available materials and we try and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, incorporate them in such a way that they create the modern design languages and not necessarily the uh, uh, vernacular design languages. So we both uh, studied from JJ and uh, we've been practicing for a long while. Uh, Blurring Boundaries is a recent firm. We started in 2021. Uh, some bit about our thought process with regards to uh, uh, you know design ideologies. We always uh, uh, wonder, you know, why create a problem and then uh, solve it. Uh, so why why introduce a glass facade in the West and then try to uh, figure out how to cool a space? Uh, so we always like work on uh, the idea that uh, le in, during planning itself, let's focus on getting uh, uh, a lot of things right. Uh, simple measures like uh, orienting your building correctly, uh, 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 creating uh, uh, the uh, windows and openings in uh, appropriate directions and such measures, such simple measures can ensure that your building has very minimum heat gains and it performs well uh, in different climates. So one of the major things we focus on is how to make a space comfortable without uh, uh, introducing uh, too many heavy high in energy intensive uh, measures that is our main focus uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, we also as, as you mentioned we also uh, have a lot of uh, uh, vernacular methodologies that we adopt from uh, you know the local site the local situations but as Prashant mentioned, we do not interpret them in the normal uh, uh, 
traditional method necessarily a design language is fairly modern along with passive design technologies we also focus on active technologies like solar panels uh, composting etc which are not necessarily uh, you know part of the main building structure but what uh, uh, in the larger scheme what uh, makes the overall project a uh, sustainable uh, sustainable uh, project and basically it's a holistic approach to the whole uh, project uh, also sustainability which is a very often uh, used word we kind of have a much uh, wider definition uh, of it uh, what is very important with sustainability is what is appropriate um, for example one of our projects uh, we're uh, you know using uh, ferro cement we're using uh, uh, metal but uh, the important thing is we are preserving a 100 year old ecology there so when you compare uh, probably the material versus ecology uh, you know an existing ecology we felt that uh, it is more appropriate to preserve that ecology um, especially in that context so i think uh, in every project the first thing we try to uh, answer is what is appropriate for that given context so yeah some of these are very basic uh, design strategies which we adopt in spite of so many years in the practice we still kind of uh, try and adopt these uh, uh, passive design strategies how we orient the building what is the thermal massing in which direction uh, the radi uh, you know the natural light should be sufficient that you do not uh, have to switch on uh, light during the day Uh, so these are very simple basic measures which probably need to be uh, uh, you know incorporated from first year of uh, architectural college but uh, we find that that is not always the case and these are some this is something that we try and incorporate in all of our uh, projects irrespective of uh, uh, you know the scale or the location or the requirements of the project and uh, uh, this is something we also work towards educating the client uh for you know it it makes a lot of difference when the client is educated about these simple measures uh some of the technology uh, materials that we work with we're working with rammed earth cob um csb uh, wood bamboo in general in terms of materials uh, uh, as we mentioned we uh, prefer to work with the locally available materials and uh, Uh, in most of the part most part of parts of the india uh, we get we easily get uh, cob we easily get uh, stones we easily get bricks so uh, you know we prefer to work with this so we don't necessarily stick to a single material uh, but yeah i mean we have been uh, uh, kind of working and experimenting with a lot of these materials and we don't necessarily use them in the typical method as well uh we do a lot of organic designing and uh, how we incorporate these into that without um which st while still being cost effective is something that we kind of work towards uh, along with selection of the material it's also important how you use it like uh, simple material like brick but when you uh, make a wall out of uh, a trap bond it saves on materials and it also performs better thermally and uh, uh, the list goes on with different kind of materials uh, uh, you can make arches with the bricks uh, even the rcc field, uh, rcc slab instead of making a uh, conventional slab we, we prefer to go for this filler slab simply because again it uh, uh, insulates the space better it saves on material uh, we also try and use uh, recycled materials uh, uh, recycled and uplifted materials waste materials uh, in the project and so basically any any project is kind of divided into three aspects of sustainability one is the design itself uh, so passive design technology is while designing the project um, one the other is materials and the third is technologies construction technology so we always focus on these three aspects along with of course the user experience for the project and then active uh, sustainable technologies so again as we said we try and work towards a holistic approach uh and you know uh, not ignore these aspects which are uh, kind of the basics of uh, uh, uh you know uh, any sustainable project so 
And so now we'll take you through some of our projects. Uh, Mativan is a natural building farmhouse. Uh, uh, there's very minimal use of uh, energy intensive materials like cement and steel. Uh, uh, we have used mud from the site itself uh, for construction of the walls. Uh, uh, overall, the site had a lot of trees. It's like a, a project in the middle of a forest. So we have uh, uh, you know, designed the spaces around the trees. Uh, and then uh, uh, simple uh, measures like ensuring that uh, uh, the most of the uh, spaces are oriented in the east-west direction, the roofs are sloping towards north, uh, openings are created in such a way that there is cross ventilation throughout the structure. So uh, the overall uh, project has about four bedrooms. We've spread it out to kind of uh, connect with nature, uh, connect with uh, the sense of openness through the project. Um, what you see in the side sections is also how the entire structure does not have your, uh, it, it has a very uh, different kind of massing in each space. Also, you can see how the built and unbuilt interacts with itself, uh, with uh, each other and how they merge with each other. So in terms of the material palette here, uh, it's, it's, uh, we've used uh, soil from the site, wood, uh, we were uh, having a lot of stone on site, uh, we uh, sourced bamboo, uh, lime, uh, kota, but all these are natural low embodied, uh, energy embodied materials. Uh, we've used a lot of recycled uh, uh, elements like, you know, tires and uh, glass and uh, terracotta tiles and bottles. The intention um, has been that we, even these materials we use in such a way that they are aesthetic. Um, it, it's the you know it all has to fit into an interesting pattern, an aesthetic, and that is when the value is enhanced. So while doing a natural building and uh, you know focusing on the uh, sustainable aspects of the building, we. At the same time, we ensure that uh, you know the overall space provides a very unique experience of staying in, uh, which is about uh, thermal comfort, which is about uh, being connected to the surroundings all the time, which is also about uh, uh, you know uh, the kind of experience that it gives in terms of uh, the height and the proportions and overall form of the structure. And. Uh Again, what is important is uh, we experiment a little bit uh, for sure on site. Uh, for example, we've used a lot of built-in furniture here with bamboo crate. Now, sometimes those experiments are not necessarily always successful, but uh, it is part of this entire journey of sustainability. Uh, in this particular project, uh, we've also introduced this cooling system. So we didn't want to introduce air conditioning if possible because mud as it is, is a very uh, thermal uh, insulative uh, material and uh, uh, it had a huge thermal mass. So we expected that overall as it is, it would be comfortable. And then we've introduced this cooling system uh, where, you know, uh, we uh, take in air through uh, exhaust fans, cooled air through the exhaust fan, and throw it in the uh, into the rooms. We have also incorporated solar panels, um, uh, biodigester system for solid waste. Um, also, uh, uh, we are keen on uh, using local labors for the overall construction. So, entire structure is built by the uh, local tribal community. So here, uh, in this particular project, we also wanted to uh, kind of, uh, uh, we hoped that the uh, hoped that the impact of building with mud and a, uh, a very, uh, you know, solid structure with mud would impact the community and make them believe uh, in what is, uh, you know, usually called a kacha construction. Uh, some visuals of the project.
part of the square feet uh, home uh, where you know the client came with a simple brief that he wanted to be connected to nature and he wanted a place which where his kids could run around uh, within the house so this is where uh, uh, we have also ensured that along uh, along with sustainability uh, the the basic uh, luxuries are not compromised so uh, there are five mango trees on site and the entire planning is done around them and this is partially why we end up uh, designing a lot of organic buildings because uh, tree, you know nature itself is so organic that uh, uh, sometimes straight lines and very rigid forms just don't work um, so we preserved all the five trees and come up with a very uh, uh, unique form that sense uh, even while the overall area of the house is small but the spaces are planned in such a way that uh, uh, you know all the li- uh, all the uh, living area kitchen everything is connected together and uh, it's a single volume so that it always feels very uh, spacious uh, we often uh, present to the client in this manner where we either make a study model or a 3d model and then um, uh, you can see that the initial concept and the final uh, uh, finished project project kind of flows from the original idea so when we pr- uh, presented this uh, design to the client he was like okay the design looks interesting but will we be able to execute this so. and uh, uh, in this particular project we used uh, local bricks uh, entirely so these were not uh, uh, you know bricks uh, uh, which were uh, uh, by a cutter however because at the end of it all it's been finished so while it has a rustic look uh, it's still something that uh, uh, you know you can work with uh, this is the entry uh, individual spaces uh, so it's a singular uh, uh, sculptural mass um, this was one building where we also wanted to kind of uh, uh, give a sculptural effect rather than a structure so it has a very eclectic uh, vibe to the whole uh, uh, you know structure and you can barely see the building when you're coming from the road uh, because it just merges into the trees and it just kind of slowly uh, flows upwards uh, so this is Asmalai. Uh, now that said, we don't always again uh, work uh, uh, with only uh, brick and uh, my natural or vernacular materials. Uh, uh, as we said, it's dependent on the site requirements. So this project is in Uttarakhand. The site is very uh, uh, remote, and there was uh, uh, the labor was not available easily. Uh, and there was time constraint so uh, and the site overall is very ecologically sensitive so we didn't want to uh, intervene much with the site so uh, so uh, in that context we came up with uh, a prefabricated structure uh, most most parts of the uh, structure are uh, built not on site but they are uh, uh, transported to the site and just uh, installed and assembled there. So, uh, I mean, it's it's a completely different approach compared to the first two projects, but it is part of sustainability uh, in terms of the context. Uh, sometimes uh, the, you have to cater to the uh, because it, it, you couldn't have people uh, uh, on site again and again to repair anything. So the client wanted something very very. Uh, maintenance free 
this is one of our uh, first projects, brick house. Uh, again, use of very simple local earthy materials. Uh, the important uh, things here was uh, more than the materials, how the materials are used and how the overall space is planned. So this was part of uh, uh, when we when blurring boundaries wasn't in existence. Uh, so some of the uh, this was a very challenging project because at this point uh, we had very little experience, um, and it was uh, uh, a challenge in terms of uh, a lot of research, a lot of. Uh, the kind of uh, work we developed within this project uh, was entirely new even to us. This was another project we did after. Uh, so what we real realized was that a lot of people, uh, uh, while appreciating the, this project, were also skeptical about doing the same thing for their home. And then uh, after we used a lot of these technologies but made a slightly more conventional home, uh, I think uh, a lot of people were able to relate uh, a lot more to this structure, which also taught us a lot about uh, uh, you know uh, people sensibilities. This again is a home we are doing uh, currently. Um, it, it is under construction. Uh, so uh, we are using sustainable. Uh, uh, materials and technologies, but in a very uh, modern and uh, minimal uh, way of design, which is very different from the previous projects that you have seen. Uh, so uh, it is a very, very uh, uh, traditional, uh, uh, we're using a lot of traditional uh, uh, ways of building also, but we just kind of tweaked it a little to make it a more modern building. Uh, this is a project which is under construction uh, in Kerala. Uh, it's a spa for a resort. Uh, uh, so again, very uh, organic design language. You can see the walkthrough of the project. Hmm. Uh, I think the walkthrough has some issue. Uh, this is a project we're doing in Goa. Uh, it's an eco resort. Um, uh, this has about 100 odd trees, uh, 80 odd trees, uh, which are almost 100 years old. A lot of coconut trees. Um, so this is an existing. Uh, uh, it has an existing house, and we've developed the entire back area uh, with uh, pools and uh, with cottages and pool area. But what was critical for this project was that we haven't cut a single tree. So again, the organic shapes and organic design language uh, helped in, uh, uh, you know, uh, creating unique experience at the same time, uh, uh, not harming any existing ecology. So this is, uh, so these are all uh, raised up to a certain level, le uh, one floor up. Uh, again, to not disturb the ground level. Uh, the entire ground level is going to be landscaped, um, and uh, it's it's going to be an extremely green forest uh, kind of a vibe. The basic idea is that uh, you know uh, when we looked at the site uh, for the first time, it looked like a forest, and we thought that we wanted to preserve that feel of the forest through the project. Even sitting inside the room, uh, you needn't, you know, kind of forget. It, it's like your private forest for each room. Uh, there is a walkway which passes through the trees. So it has a very treehouse uh, pod kind of a thing amidst uh, uh, an entire forest. So this is how the site felt initially, a dense forest. And what you see in the uh, side is something that has been happening in Goa quite frequently, uh, where you cut the entire. So the same ecology existed in the side uh, beside the uh, beside us, 
and they've cut all the trees and created these villas which they then call sustainable we expect that over time copper will just merge into the trees and become part of the forest so this is how it feels while walking on the elevated walkway this is of course under construction so this is how an under construction site would look for uh, young kids We have used a lot of uh, locally available wood, uh, laterite stone, created those these interesting arches and walkways. A glimpse through the interior, internal. Uh, so here the project is intended to be a luxury project. Um, however, we are saying that luxury and uh, sustainability and ecology needn't be exclusive uh, to each other. This is part of the toilet, a lot of experiments inside. Um, we also believe that uh, because a lot of uh, people are buying second homes, a lot of uh, communities are getting developed, uh, uh, you know, outside of the main cities. Uh, what is happening is people, builders are taking over uh, uh, a lot of uh, green areas and then cutting everything down to kind of create this, uh, uh, you know, community, gated communities of villas. Uh, but we believe that uh, that will destroy cultures, that will destroy uh, uh, the biodiversity of all these areas and the reason you're getting out of the city will be lost in another 20 years. So that vision for 20 years is also extremely important, 20, 30, 40 years. So this was uh, for a builder, builder. Uh, we had proposed a two acre forest in the center of the entire project um, and kind of create homes which are much more uh, open to nature so while doing such projects it's uh, inevitable that you take away some part of that ecology and uh, this was an attempt to you know give it back to the site um, so i mean this is again uh, uh, something that we uh, yeah these are some of the awards Thank you so much. This Thank is you. Uh, this was us learning boundaries. Uh, hope. Yes. Hi. Thank you so much. It was a really wonderful presentation, and it was so interesting to look at all those uh, forms that you have created, and especially Mati one is one of my favorite projects from the entire uh, presentation. And, it's really commendable that you are trying to preserve all the trees that are available on the site and not letting them go, which is like a really sad part, I think, when it comes to architecture that people just cut down trees and there's no greenery left. And then we have those artificial plants growing inside, which makes no sense. Many times when the landscape comes in place and then they try and get the big trees so that... Yeah. You know, feel of natural surroundings right right i mean as architects we accept that uh, you know, we will uh, impact uh, uh, ecology in a negative way because ultimately we're building we are uh, using energy intensive uh, this but our intention and what we believe is the future is how to reduce the impact how to minimize the the moment you decide that you are going to build something, it is inevitable that uh, you know the uh, site, the surroundings are getting going to get.